it, it even makes God even more angry. When a sinner does some, tries to do something good, yeah. it makes God even more angry because they think that they're doing that good to try to earn favor with God or to try to substitute blood or substitute the cross. And look what it says in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 8. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. So when you try to do something, if you're a fallen son or daughter of God, a fallen, a fallen son or daughter, a child of disobedience, a sinner, and you're trying to do things to try to earn favor with God, that makes God even more angry. So it's, it's, this cup of indignation gets even fuller on you. What if they're doing it out of pure intentions? Like they're trying to change It doesn't their life matter because around. what they're trying to do is they're trying to bypass yeah, what Christ true. did, and that makes God even more angry. No, I mean, like, what if they're trying to do it like true intentions? Like they're I know trying they're, trying they're trying to, they're trying to do it with true intentions. Right. 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 The problem is right. their righteousness, like he yeah. says, is like filthy rags. And when people try to do things because they have an evil heart, it's not acceptable with God. Their sacrifice is an abomination. You know what's crazy to me? It just came to me. It's like if they're gonna, if they do good, if they, if they do a good deed, that means they're capable of of turning from evil. They just choose, but they not. won't. They choose not. To. Well, and a lot of times, like it was kind of like with Steph. If you don't mind me just adding this real quick, it was like Steph was saying earlier, like she never really did drugs or like mm -hmm. did certain things, but she, but her motivations behind them were never, were never, it, they weren't. The, the motivation was not good, but so basically what I'm trying to say is like even when when the sinner thinks they're doing something good, like maybe they're going out and feeding the yeah. homeless or walking, there's always a deeper motive that is not pure. That Take for example pure. that lesbian woman that was out there feeding the homeless. Yeah, people. remember what she said. She's out there with the table yeah. feeding the homeless. Then she gets upset because we're preaching the Bible. Actually, we were just reading songs. Yeah, we were just reading the reading songs. Yeah. And then when we left. She went in there and grabbed those Bibles and stole them and took that sign down. Wow. See, her heart was so dark and so evil. Yeah, that, that deed that she just did. She, that yeah. deed she did is a more of an a lot of those good deeds home. they do, it's just rooted in pride so they can just pat themselves on the yeah. back. And, that's it. Or, that's to just, it. or to just... Somebody read Isaiah 63.3. A sense of self or worth or something. Yeah. Yeah. The praise Isaiah 63.3. Yeah. Yeah. Or even just to have yeah. real value. So it says, just to feel Psalm, or Isaiah 63, verse 3, yeah. I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I would tread them in my anger, and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. See, it says there in Revelation 19, that Christ, when he comes back, he's going to come back with a, with a garment. A vesture, dip, a vesture blood. dipped in blood. Wow. It's not his own blood, though. A lot of people read that and they think, oh, that's the blood of Jesus. You know, it's the blood that he was stained with when he died on the cross. No. That's the blood of the enemies he's going to trample under his foot. Wow. And smash in the wine press. He's going to trample over the foot of his enemies. In fact, he even says that the righteous, in, and I believe it was Isaiah 50, uh, 8, wow. 10, 57, 10 or 58, 10, where it says we're going to walk, wash our feet in the blood of the wicked. But Jesus is going to trample them in his fury and he's going to stain his raiment with the blood of his enemies. Now that does not sound like the crib Jesus. That does not sound like the baby manger Jesus. That's not like the docile lamb. Okay? And you know a lamb? You know what a, a grown-up lamb is, brother? You know what a grown-up lamb is? A ram. A ram. A ram. <laughs> and if you've ever seen a ram, oh, man. you know those, those animals have got fury in them. The way they fight each other. I mean, they, they just, yeah, the way they fight. And I mean, they got there's power in so, them. So a lamb that bah, it turns into a it grows up to be a, a ram. It's a male, <laughs> male ram. So I mean, imagine, imagine Christ coming back, not not as just a lamb, but as a ram. I didn't know that. As a furious ram, and if you read in Daniel. I believe it's chapter oh, seven. It talks oh, about that ram with the one with the one horn with collar. It said he had collar. He was 
angry. And he's flying, and in fact, he said his feet didn't even touch the ground. Wow. It was his flying, and of course, that represents Alexander the Great. That's another story. Wow, that's crazy. But that's the Greeks. That represents the Greek Empire. But that's Christ when he comes back. I mean, he's going he's gonna to make the Greek invasions of Persia and India look like nothing. Wow. I mean, he's, he's wow. coming back to do a lot more damage than them. Wow. There's something about the face of God, too. Sinners are terrified of the face of God. Revelation 6, bro. Yeah. He said, hide me from the face of him that sits upon the throne. See, no one can see his face and not be completely and utterly terrified. Wow. Look what it says in, right. in Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 18. Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. That's not going to hear them in hell. And they're not going to be able to see his face either. And the face is going to terrify him. Look what it says in Ezekiel 38, 18. My fury will show in my face. 38, 18? Yes. Ew, that's it says terrifying. my fury is going to show in my face. That's terrifying. See, the face of God is going to be the most terrifying thing. To look up and see the face of God. That, that is going to be oh, absolutely terrifying. I think about that, man. Because it says that in, in 1 Even Peter 3.12, the face of the Lord is against those that do evil. And then it says in, in Psalm 34.16, the same thing. The face of the Lord is against those who are doing evil. 34. It doesn't mean that His face is turned the other direction. No. It says the countenance of His face is against those that are doing evil. Psalms 34. I believe 34, 16. So God's face is it's like looking at it. I'm against you in my face, and it's like the fury of God's in his face. And that's where the shame, because the Bible says when you look up, are you looking in confidence? Are you looking in shame? You know, because I feel like... You know what I love this? It says, in, it, it says in Revelation uh, chapter 22, it says we're going to look in his face. It says wow. particularly it we're going to look in his face. We're going to see his face. Mm -hmm. Nobody else can see his face and live. Remember Moses? Remember? And he couldn't even show it to Moses. You remember Moses? When God had to turn his back yeah. and show Moses his yeah. back. Yeah. And then when he came down, he was... Shining so yeah. brightly, people had to put a veil over his That was just his back. That was just his back. Oh, oh wow. Back. That's oh, crazy. That's got to be terrifying to see your face and that's Oh. Oh, man. I mean, I feel like drop as dead. Us, it's going to be terrifying. We can be drop as dead. Like, there's no way. Like, oh, the face of God, man. Oh. Look what it says in Thessalonians. First Thessalonians 2, 16. See, people don't realize that once sin builds up to a certain point, it's like it's filled up. Remember when, it, when he said that the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full? Mm. He was saying that I'm not going to judge them yet. I'm going to wait till their sin is finished. So it's filled up. Like the cup of, his, of their wrath is full, and then I'm going to judge them. So that's the way it is. When people say, well, why doesn't God come now and just wipe out all of this sin? It's filling up. It's filling up. He's got his long suffering at the same He's time. long suffering. He's and here's another concept. When it says that he that he, he says his it says he's gonna be poured out from the from his from the cup of his wrath unmixed. It says it's where is that where's that verse, brother? Um, is that Revelation eighteen? Yes, but I'm trying to look for the exact verse. It says They shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture. That's the key word. Without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Meaning, it's not mixed with mercy. It's not mixed with grace. It's not mixed with, with long-suffering anymore. It's just the pure, unadulterated wrath of God. What verse is that? Um, I don't have a reference on it. I just remembered it. You can just Google it, brother. Find right. it. But... Basically, it's not mixed with the mercy, the grace, the love, the, the, the long-suffering, the kindness. Now is the unadulterated wrath of God. Just the full-blown Just anger. the full fury of wow. God. Dude, some, some, uh, Unmixed. Someone said that's why um, God, um, when Jesus was on the cross and he said, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? Yeah. Because, because Jesus took upon him our sins, God can look yes. upon him because he had our sins. He, 
says, God cannot look upon iniquity. It says there in uh, Habakkuk, it says, God has a pure eyes than to behold evil and cannot look on it. Wow. That's why they say that Jesus felt forsaken. See, that's how much God hates sin. He won't, he won't even look at it. Wow. He won't even look at it. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. But you see, it says there in Thessalonians that the Jews, for First Thessalonians 2, verse 16, it says that the Jews, they were forbidding them to the church there at Thessalonica to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins all way for the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. The wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. Now that would be fulfilled later. When? When the Romans came in, three different legions, and wiped out Jerusalem. The wrath of God was executed upon them. Over a million Jews died. Over a million Jews. If you guys study that out, a million Jews died in the Roman invasion of Palestine and the and the, the uh, destruction of Jerusalem. There are many of them crucified. Wow. So their sins were, were being filled up. They were being built up. They said they filled up their sins all way. Wow. And God's wrath came upon them to the uttermost. And Jesus predicted it even 30 years before it happened. Mm -hmm. 40 years, sorry. 40 years before it happened. Interesting how it is 40 years. <laughs> 40 is like God's uh, span of patience. Mm -hmm. Because you got the 40 days of the rain falling. You got, you know, the 40 years. Um, 40 days and 40 nights. And 40 then, days and 40. Yeah, I mean, 40 is just, it's the you know, one of God's numbers. The vast things too. Mm -hmm. But, you know, none of these numbers are, you know, obviously none of them are coincidental. I mean, they're all there. Yeah. You know, because mm -hmm. God structured everything on a numeral system. But... Basically, that cup is filling up. Yeah. The cup of wrath is being is being filled up. So you see people that don't repent, don't get right with God. They don't want to serve God, and we think, well, maybe God, you should just have pity on them. But they don't realize how much wrath they've stored up. And we always want to just we always want to try to defend God, and we always try to we always want to try to say, well, God, you're being too you're, you're, you're being too severe here, but you never want to do that. Because the truth is you don't understand the power of His holiness. You don't understand the power of His anger. You don't understand it. Because you're not God. You're not going to teach God. A lot of people think they're kinder, nicer, gentler, and more holy than God. Oh, I treat people nicer than God treats them. Because look, God killed that man over there. Yeah. Oh, I, would treat, I, I, I treat people nicer than God treated the Canaanites. But they didn't realize that the reason why God destroyed the Canaanites is because they were sacrificing their children to idols. And they would use drum beats to, to you know, muffle out the screams as they were throwing the children into the fires. Are you serious? Oh. So a lot of times we want to jump and be like, I'm holier than God. I know more than God. I'm kinder than God. But not even realizing that God has a purpose by every wrath that he's executed. And I say this. I'm going to say this. And this is going to confuse a lot of people. But if I somehow miss heaven, if I somehow miss heaven, I hope it never happens, then it's just. It's just. Okay? Because God does everything. He does all things well. Everything He does is perfect. And His wrath will be executed only perfectly. God's going to execute His wrath perfectly. No one's ever going to be judged improperly. Or unrighteously. God does no unrighteousness in judgment. Mm -hmm. No respect to the person. Well, that judgments are good. Yes. What's confusing? They're true and righteous. No, I mean, a lot of people say, well, you're not going to miss heaven, brother. You're not. Well, I, don't, I don't say that because I'm not there yet. Right. Brother. I'm not there yet. And a lot of people have made shipwreck their faith. They've gone back into perdition. They've become like Demas who love the world more than God. I hope yeah. Demas is in heaven. I don't think so. No, no, no. I don't think it's in heaven. I hope he is, I say, for his sake. Yeah, I don't think he made it to heaven. Why? Because he loved this present world. And if you love the, the world, the love of the Father's not in you. And you stop preaching the gospel. With Paul. He's not, and yeah, and he, he departed. Crescens to Dalmatia, Titus you know, to Galatia, all these people that departed. He could have, but it doesn't say that he did, though. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's, that's a good point. The only person that we know ever came back yeah. was Mark. Mark stopped laboring and then Mark came back because he was profitable for the ministry. Right. But you see, with Mark, here's the here's the difference between Mark and Demas. Let's so tell you guys now. Mark came back and he it wasn't just that. Mark, it didn't say he loved the world. That's why he departed. Yeah. Right. It was something that happened in him where he was fearing the ministry or he was fearing something that related to God's calling. He was still a child of God. And I think even if Mark had died without coming back, he probably would have still been a child of God and probably could have gone to heaven. But Demas had said he loved the present world. He was departing after the wealth, the riches, the prosperity. The comfortability. He was going after the things of the world. It didn't say Mark was departing because he wanted to go back and hook up with some hooker back in, you know, wherever he was. Well, that's, what I, that's what I was thinking. Maybe that's how not what it says, saying. though. Yeah. It just, and later, you know, we know, we see the heart of Mark in coming back because he was profitable for the ministry. But Demas forsook. Forsook him. Completely. You know, a lot of people want to mock the yeah, wrath of God. But you don't realize that... For example, that lady the other day, and I keep going back to that lady that stole the Bibles. But see, what she did is a far greater sin than just somebody committing, you know, whatever. Or breaking one of the Ten Commandments. Because she is offending in the holy things of God. I mean, she is trampling the, the holy things of God, denying other people... The opportunity. Remember, Jesus was upset with the Pharisees. Why? Because you have shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. You go not in yourselves, and those that are entering, you have hindered. See, she was hindering others from receiving those Bibles. And not just others, but homeless people who were needy. You yes. Know? They had no, like... She was standing in the way of other people receiving the gospel. Yeah. You, wanna, you don't want to oppress the needy, you know? I mean, what she did was, oh, I, I was fearing for her after I found out. I was like, that, that lady is, that is just ridiculous. I mean, she is really treading on He's a protector. Of her. I was even joking, person. saying that maybe I was surprised God didn't strike her with a bolt of lightning when she was doing that. But it's happened. There was a man in Tennessee that did that. Went up on a hill, was mocking God, yelling at God, cursing God. A fly threw in his throat. He chucked and died. No way. He chucked out a fly? Chuck. You can read about it. There's some big in Tennessee. <laughs> or really a hunting bird. Or really there were, oh, that fly must have See, God, God will, you know, God, God, God knows what he's doing. God is not mine. So, like somebody look up Job 26.13. Who's got Job 26.13? I, I think this is the last verse. We're I got this one. I got, I got one. Job 26.13. I'll, I'll read this one. I really like Job. It said, by his spirit he hath garnished the heavens. His hand... Or his hand hath formed the no, crooked he did, serpent. He read 25. It's the next verse. I think it's the next verse. 14. Job 26, 13? Yeah. Read, read verse 14. Okay. Read, read Lo, verse. these are, are parts oh. of his ways. Yeah, is that it? I'm reading it. Keep reading it. Okay. Reading it. But how little a portion is heard of him, but the thunder of his power who can understand. No, wow. that's not it. That's a great verse. But that's that's not, not it. The <laughs> thunder of his power. Oh, I'm sorry. Guys. It's 36. Oh, 36. Chapter 36. Praise God, though. He still found it. Yeah, that's, a, but that's another good one. Yeah, the thunder of his power. Who can understand? That was a mistake, and God was showing us that. Amen. Hey, that oh, was the Lord. Lord. 26. 36, what, brother? Right? Job 36, 13. All right. Um, but the hypocrites in heart heap up wrath. They cry not when he bindeth them. Yes, wow. the hypocrites in heart, heart are heaping up wrath. Oh, a lot of oh brother, I'll tell you, the hypocrites, man, that's why judgment begins at the house of God. It's going to yeah. be so brutal. So hypocrites. The hypocrites in heart are heaping up wrath. The in big back. heaps. Like, a, like the, brother, I do this, I talk about this a lot when I preach. The upper millstone. You guys know about the upper millstone, right? Yeah. It was the crushing stone. It was the stone used to grind the, uh, the, the grain, the corn, and separate from the chaff. It was used, it was turned by actually two animals, you know, because oh, it was really yeah. heavy. Um, but, but to grind all, all the, the meal, to grind it, to grind the crops. And that it's a crushing stone. It's like that crushing stone coming upon you and grinding you to powder. 
If I think about the weight of sin that's upon us without Christ. Without Christ, you're going to face the weight of your own sin. The I got weight a, of your I own sin. Verse, um, oh, Isaiah 33, 14. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites. There you go, another who, hypocrite. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? There you go. A hypocrite with his mouth. What, what chapter is that? Yes. Isaiah 33, 14. I read that earlier today. I have some verses too. So it also says in Job that the hypocrite's hope shall perish. Uh, Psalms 79, 5 and 6. Oh yeah, read that, brother. I forgot about that verse. Read that. How long, Lord, will... Wilt thou be angry forever? Shall thy jealousy burn like fire? Yes. The answer to that is yes. His anger will be his anger will be forever. Why? Because they're going to be in hell forever, and God's going to be angry with them forever. How long will his anger burn against them? Forever. forever. Smoke of their torment. Mm. Sons of I heard a good argument the, the other day. Um, <coughs> some people they they try to go into like the Hebrew or the Greek or come up with yeah. different ideas to try to different ways of, of trying to prove that um, there is no eternal punishment or annihilationism. Good or luck on that one. But the words used for eternity in the Old Testament and the New Testament is the same words used to describe the. Uh, the eternity of God. Yeah, it means there's like no beginning and no end. Yeah. It's like Olam and, and uh, Ionion in the Greek. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, there's, no, there's not going to be any hope. It's everlasting. Okay. So his, his anger is going to burn them forever. Read the next verse, brother. Go to the next verse on that one. Pour out thy wrath upon the, the heathen that have not known thee, and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon thy name. Yeah, pour, David was saying, God, pour out your wrath upon the heathen that don't even know you. Psalm 79. Yep, 5 and 6. So, I mean, are, are we praying like David? Wow. Are we praying like David? You he said, pour out God your wrath, God, God, upon the heathen that have not known, that don't know you and that don't call upon your name. Wow. I bet if God pours out his wrath, more of them will end up getting saved. More will get saved, of course. Why? Yeah. Because look what happened to Ananias and Sapphira. Because when they got smoked, great fear fell upon all the church. Yeah. Great fear. What about 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 7? They became wise. 7 to 8, where it says that uh, God is coming back in flaming fire. Yeah, it revealed from heaven with flaming fire, taking vengeance on those that do not know God and that do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who should be punished with everlasting destruction. That's a good one. Everlasting destruction. Oh, everlasting destruction. So these people that say hell is just a place where you're destroyed, but you're not really suffering under That's God's wrath. This is wrong. What do you mean destroyed? Yes, you are destroyed. It's called damnation. Like my sister, she's Mormon, and she says that, like, basically how it's like when you are basically far away from God, and that's the punishment itself because you can In the outer darkness. Yeah. Like, not be in the presence of God, that's like punishment. But is, do they believe that's the only punishment? Yeah, yeah. that's what I was like. Oh, what's yeah. true? Billy Graham had a teaching yeah, years ago about that, about how that he, he thought that hell could be like a, a, a thirst for God. Yeah. It's never filled or something. I don't know. That's not accurate. It's, it's going to be cast in the lake. They are going to be thirsty, but it's going to be because of fire. Yeah, it's going to be because of a fiery, burning sensation. The last verse I'm going to leave you with is Ecclesiastes 3, verse 8. I'm going to give this one. A time to love and a time I'm going to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Folks, there's things that should anger us about the world and the things that are happening. We should be in the wrong side of the Bible. The problem is the church, the church is not angry enough. He flips to the front of the bed. Maybe that's what it is, brother. The church, the church is, is angry. not angry enough. They're just not angry about anything. They're not angry enough. David, David says they, they don't have the heart of God. They have the heart of God to be furious. Go ahead. David said, I hate those that hate me. I count them my yeah. enemies. I hate oh, them yeah. with perfect hatred. hatred. Wow. That means complete. Over here. That word perfect in the Greek or the Hebrew means complete hatred. Wow. That means I'm totally in opposition. I'm, I'm totally in opposition. Yeah. 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 If that doesn't show people that... Yeah. The church doesn't... See, the problem is the church doesn't have the heart of God. Therefore, they don't have the same... They don't think the same way as God because they don't have the mind of Christ. If they had the mind of Christ, they could not stand sin. Yeah. I can't stand seeing this sin. When I saw all this sin, I was like, I hate this. 
It's so like, for example, when I went to Mardi Gras a couple of years ago, uh, I was just, I, I was just like, brother, I'm vexed. I told Brother Rick, I said, I'm vexed by this. I can't, I, this, I hate this. I'm so upset right now. Because he's, the whole streets is full of people, like, shoulder to shoulder, having a sin fest, throwing beads topless at each other, and drinking alcohol, and just, and then they're calling themselves Christians because it's at, it's quote on Fat Tuesday. It's a Catholic holiday. Yeah, this is a Catholic celebration. Fat Tuesday. What? Yeah, it's a Catholic celebration. It's like a, the day before Ash Wednesday. Yeah, you let all the kids. It's like let's that's like, the oh, part of it that makes me the that that was the part that sent me over the edge in anger. Is that you're gonna call this a Christian quote unquote holiday? But you gotta get all of your sin out before we start this Ash Wednesday. That's all wrong. Oh, I did the, oh, brother, I was boiling. I was boiling. I was boiling, brother. So were you preaching there or what? Yes. We went there two years. I, I went there twice. I, 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 you gotta go and you gotta get to bring a lot of brothers and you gotta be prepared yeah. if you're gonna go. It's horrible, brother. Fantasy fest. Horrible. It's a naked event. It's good. Oh, no. It's a homosexual naked event. Wow. And people, glor they make fun of pedophiles too. They dress in diapers. And they act like one one person's a, yeah, a yeah, diaper yeah. kid, the other person's coming yeah, after yeah, like a predator. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. Oh, that's yeah. yeah. It's all evil, bro. No, you correct They dress up as children. Brother, the people do the, yeah. the craziest, yeah. most yeah. disgusting yeah. things yeah. there. It's 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 called fantasy fest. All the imagination oh. of man's minds. Oh. Oh. All the ima oh. imagination of men's minds are on full display. Just like oh. before the flood, that's why God failed yeah. everyone in the world. Oh, yes. I no, I feel like this is worse. Yeah. This has to be worse. Where's that at? Where? This has to be worse than before the flood, bro. That's just disgusting. Man. That's just like, oh, bro, brother, the things they do down there at like that fantasy fest. Well, the Bible says there's nothing new under Brother, where's that at? That's in Key West. Wow. Oh. There's nothing so new. So you mean to tell me? They were probably. You bro. mean to tell me, Ron? Back in the day, there's nothing new under the sun. It's the same thing here as it was. I don't know that for that verse. I don't know if you got that verse because like the other cars. I can't imagine that happening. We're talking about sin. We're talking about sin. We're talking about sin. Like they were yeah. indulging yeah. in wicked sins. That's what I'm saying. Like, like it could have had I think they were doing like ancient graves and stuff. Like, oh yeah, definitely ancient shows. You know what it says there in First Corinthians ten? The word for um. When it says they, they ate and they drank and they rose up to play, that word play actually means, um, you know, sexual festivities. No, it is. Yeah, yes. yes. yeah. Well, we're, they were yes. playing games. Uh, they were having sex with yeah. the yes. yes. Romans were known, brother, for, for, for all of that stuff. Yeah. Or Jesus. Yeah. 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 Well, isn't that talking about the Israelites? First Corinthians chapter 10, where it says they ate, they drank, they rose up to play. That playing does not mean they were going out to play games of softball. So you mean the Israelites went that straight that fast within a month span? Brother, less, within yes. less, of the, less than a month yeah, of, of seeing, of seeing God. Really Bro, within, right. within, within literally, like, like, and then they're already having orgies? Galatians, brother, is a crazy. Oh, foolish Galatians, that has to be you that you are so soon falling away from the truth. They were quickly departing from the truth, brother. Like, how are they quickly are gone out of the way? Like, they literally just had finished seeing God do these miraculous things that people still talk about to this day. And then days later, they're having an orgy. I mean, it's just like crazy. It's the forgetfulness of time, bro. Man. They forget. That's just her. So, the problem why there's so much sin today, and Dakota and I have talked about this multiple times, the reason why there's so much sin today is because the churches are too afraid to on sin, to, to, to rebuke people for their sin, to stand up against sin, and to call sin for what it is. Making me one of those Yeah, they don't do it in the church, and they certainly they certainly don't do it outside the church. Yeah, because they don't even do it in the church. If they're not going to do it in the church, they're not going to do it outside. They don't even do their easy believers in outside the church. And yeah. so the reason why there's yeah. so much sin is because of the churches. It's not because people have all of a sudden become more wicked. I don't think so. I think it's the churches have become more wicked. Yeah. And the people are following suit. Because we're the salt and <coughs> the light of the earth. Yeah, we're salt and the light. So we're not going to stand and rebuke it. Who is? 
And see, because we're not, it says, uh, if, if, if we lose our, our, our savor, our savor like, like, what good are we, right? So yeah. people aren't going to take the Christian serious anymore. Yeah. They're not going to take us serious if we're not. We so I'm going to leave you with this. What, what, what happened when David went out to see Goliath? He told his brothers, he said, is there not a cause? Oh, is yeah. there not a cause? Yeah. See, my, my question to you guys in this room is, is there not a cause for us to be angry? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 22, 